something about the fleeting, fading moments leading up to shooting time. It's the calm before the storm. It's the deep breath before the plunge. The stage is set and the cast has taken their places, vanishing into the dark two blows like a mist. Despite the cold, empty blackness and the total absence of detail, our senses are quickened and provide more data than we can possibly process at once. The whistling grunt of a Drake Mallard and the sound of rushing air through wings overhead I'm reminded just how small and insignificant we really are compared to the grandeur of the stage called creation. Out of all this, how does God know or care that we're here? It's what the psalmist had in mind when he penned Psalm 8 over 3,000 years ago. I find it amazing feeling the same sense of admiration, processing the same data, only to arrive at the very same question. The context of the passage is so familiar to me that I find myself thinking, the author had to be a duck hunter. Every duck hunter has their favorite setting within which to stage their ideal pursuit. For some, it's the golden prairie of the marsh. For others, it's within warm, hidden pit blinds, strategically positioned in flooded ag fields. For us, though, nothing stirs our soul more than the perfect poetry of hunting mallards in flooded timber. There's a yearning that draws us into the dark, wild, hidden places. It's where we belong. And once there, it refuses to let us leave unchanged. It's where we feel rooted, grounded, and connected to our original design, created in the express image of God. It's where we fellowship. It's the stage where we take our collective places in a drama that's much bigger than the sum of our own. Scripture wastes no time getting to the heart of the matter. In the beginning, God created. Even though Genesis 1 proclaims it, and Romans 1 confirms it, instinctively, it's a truth we've always known. And now, in this place, on this stage, and in this setting, we're brought face to face with. Because and through the beauty of God's creation, we have no logical reason to deny Him or our part in His plan. Within our very core, we know that God is the unique and sole author and sustainer of all things. We've seen and experienced too much to reach any other conclusion. And it brings many of us to an interesting crossroads. Left to ponder a very important question, 
and make a very big decision. Do we rely on our own understanding and what makes sense to us for the sake of comfort or convenience? Or do we step out and trust the words of the sovereign artist, poet, creator, and seek his will and embrace our part in which we've all been cast in the passion of pursuit? cries out in the ocean roars and all that fill it bring you praise bring you praise Rivers clap their hands And the hills sing for joy And the leaf it withers For your praise For your praise Cause your love's the greatest Thing we have tasted all of creation longs for you have risen grace we've been given